Dear Evan Hansen is the newest Broadway to film adaptation returning to play the role of Evan Hansen is the man, the myth, the legend, the guy who originated the role on stage, Ben Platt. He's joined by Caitlin Denver, Amy Adams, and many more people. This story focuses on our title character, Evan, who is a socially awkward and mentally broken teenager in high school. After one of the other high schoolers takes his own life, Evan creates a lie that changes everything. Just some backstory with me, I love the show. It's in my top five favorite musicals of all time. I just think it's amazing. Now, I haven't seen it live, sadly, but I've seen these slime tutorials. If you know, you know, and I've listened to the soundtrack. I think back in 2019, I listened to it all the time, so I know almost all the words to almost all the songs, and I've also read the book, and I would set it behind me there, but it falls over. <laughs> and I was quite excited for the movie. I really enjoyed the trailer and I actually got to see it before it was released officially. I saw it last night on Wednesday in Toronto. So thank you Movie Scene Canada for letting me go to that screening. I won one of the contests on their website and it means a lot. The theater was packed. I really enjoyed that experience. But how was the movie though? I actually really enjoyed it. I know that this movie is getting completely ripped apart by critics, but for me, I was satisfied when I walked out of that theater. When you go into an adaptation of anything in general, but like especially musical ones, they tend to be really good or really bad. Now an example of a really good one, at least for me, is Sweeney Todd or the Tim Burton, Johnny Depp, Helena Bonham Carter movie. I really love this movie. I think it's a great adaptation. An example of a bad one is my favorite musical of all time, Phantom of the Opera, it kinda sucks, and Les Mis, I've gone back and forth on, but I do really enjoy it now, at least the last time I watched it. So I'm just glad that it was adapted really well, and I'm gonna go into that in this review, but there will be no spoilers, don't worry, obviously the film isn't fully out yet, but in like a few days, maybe tomorrow or the next day, I will have a full spoiler review talk or maybe live stream on it. I still don't understand the complaint of Ben Platt looking too old. I mean, have you seen Grease? They look like they're 30 or 40. It's just insane, and I, I always think that's really stupid but I feel like it's just because he looked different than he originally did because in the in the Broadway show or at least any of the stage shows when Ben Platt played him he had like the blonde hair and it was kind of like a comb over but now his hair is longer and it's more curly actually my friend's hair does that so it's, it's kind of funny like that but once again he captured the pure essence of Evan in both a very visual and subtle way and that's what I really love about his performance also Caitlin Denver is perfect as Zoe. She's one of my favorite actresses to emerge, I think, from like the last decade, or at least that's when I really noticed her, and I just think that was perfect casting. I didn't know she could sing that well, and the emotion that poured out of her absolutely floored me at times. The rest of the supporting cast is great as well. Platt and Denver are the main standouts here, and there wasn't an apparent weak link. One main thing that musical adaptations can fail miserably at is transferring the songs to the big screen, and honestly, for the most part, they work really well. Now, I would say they they work better as the film gets along. There are definitely times in the opening where I was like, oh, are we doing this the entire time? Where they're very flashy. I'm gonna go into that a little bit later in the video, but I'd say when it really, you know, settles down and gets more focused in on the characters, that's when it really shines. And I was excited for the movie, not only because I love the story, but also the director, Steven Chbosky, I think I'm saying that right. If I'm not, I apologize. He made The Perks of Being a Wallflower, which is not only one of my favorite films of all time, but for me, probably the most realistic film ever, at least one of them, you know, capturing the life of a high school teenager. And it's, it's a film I really relate to. I relate to the story of Dear Evan Hansen as well. So I was glad that he was directing the movie and there was a, definitely some studio interference a little bit at times where I noticed, I was like, okay, he definitely did this and the studio wanted this. So I, I noticed that a little bit, but whatever. Also, the music is just phenomenal. If you've seen the musical or if you've even heard some of the songs, you know, it just sounds so great. And once again, it sounds amazing here. Ben Platt just gets better and better and better and better. And this film also showed me that some actors that I recognize, like Amy Adams, could actually sing quite well. Now, I, I, Amy Adams might have sung in a film previously, but I haven't seen anything. She's one of my favorite actresses. So that was a nice surprise. There are definitely times where the dialogue can seem a bit off. And since it is a musical, you have to be prepared that characters are going to randomly break up in the song. That's just something that I feel like if you can get behind, you will enjoy any musical a lot more. And I've been, you know, I've gotten behind that like years ago. I'm used to it by now, to the point where it doesn't bother me. And for the most part in this film, the transitions to the songs were quite smooth. The emotional beats really hit in the film. And I will admit a lot of it is due to the terrible like subject matter. It's a very depressing story, very heartbreaking. But especially after the You Will Be Found scene, one of the biggest songs of the entire musical and movie, everything, I heard a bunch of people go, 
in the theater, so that's a good sign. And I'll admit, I even got teary at at times, and like, I didn't fully cry, but I could feel some tears in my eyes, and that's a massive compliment considering I know what's gonna happen in the story. One thing that's always a big worry is when adapting anything at all, a book to a movie, anything like that, is how much of the original source material are they gonna use, and for the most part, this film does stick with most of what is, at least what I remember being in the musical and in the book and all that. There's a few added things in the book, I'm pretty sure. I'm pretty sure it came out after the musical, which is a bit strange, but I could totally be wrong on that. They cut out a few songs, like this, again, isn't a spoiler, but they cut out the song to break in a glove, but there's still a scene involving that, it just isn't sung through, so it works like that, and even the added scenes, at least from memory, there were a few added scenes here, and they worked well. Granted, it's been a few years since I've seen it fully, and it didn't feel like it lost super important scenes, and it also didn't feel weighed down by the added ones. There's a lot of great things in this film, but there are some blaring problems at times. As mentioned before, this film can be insanely flashy to the point where it becomes a- It opens with the biggest song waving through a window, which is a great song, mind you, but it's edited to the beat of the song just like a music video did, and I was like, oh god, is this where we're going with it? I was worried when that started, I was like, the whole film better not be like this, and it isn't really, there's maybe like one other song that's like that. There's also some pacing issues here, and I really noticed this because it was almost like the film was edited like a pro shot of a play would, because in many plays or musicals or just anything in general, live shows, there's always pauses for the audience to react, whether that's them laughing or going, <gasps> or anything like that and in the film there are moments where there's just pauses and yeah in the theater some people laugh but like it's for like an extended period of time and it got to the point where I did start to notice this and I was like oh like the editing did need a little bit of work here but overall Dear Van Hansen is a very satisfying movie for fans of the musical. Ben Platt and Caitlin Denver are fantastic in their leading roles there are some unintentionally awkward moments plus the pacing is a little wonky at times but the emotional beats hit and I felt pleased walking out of that theater I'm I'm gonna give Dear Evan Hansen a 4 out of 5. I'm so happy that I like this movie. I mean, when the critics were bombing it at the start, I was like, oh, this better not be like, <laughs> better not be another Phantom, because, you know, The Phantom of the Opera is my favorite musical of all time. This adaptation, it's just not it. I've made videos in the past, but I mean, oh well. I'm very glad that I enjoyed this, and I wanna know what you think of it. Please let me know down below. As I said before, I will talk spoilers about this probably tomorrow or the next day, whether that's in a video with someone else, whether that's on a live stream with someone else, or by myself. I'm gonna do one of them for sure. I know sometimes I say that, but then I don't go through with it. I just wanna spread the love for the movie because I did really enjoy it. I do think that it is a worthy adaptation. It's a scary thing to do. It's a tough thing to do, but thank Thank you all for watching, I'll see you guys next time, over and out.